Hey everybody, welcome to the May update on the Aquarium Rod or Two Brief. Thank you to all the new subscribers. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing if you haven't already. Um, click the subscribe button and the bell uh, next to where it says subscribe so you're updated on whenever the new video comes out, which is every weekend. So this is May's update on the 125 gallon aquarium. I'm not going to do any editing on this. This is just like grab the phone and film and upload it. So get this guy. I love this guy. I love all the guys, but <clears throat> this lawnmower Blenny is awesome. Lawnmower Blennies, they clean the gra the glass and the rock of algae. That's what they eat. Little Picasso clownfish. Love those guys. Clownfish are the reason I got into the hobby. Um, we have the Ascalaris clownfish. Another Picasso clownfish. Another Ascalaris clownfish. And there's two other clownfish in here as well. A total of five clownfish. You're not supposed to have more than a pair of clownfish. Um, well, I had six. One of them passed away. Um, he actually jumped out of the tank, unfortunately. I didn't get him in time. Um, my guys are doing great. I hate seeing window glare. That's why I like filming at night. But I wanted to do this and get it to you guys during the day. The yellow tang. I've had that guy for a while. He's doing really well. Love these clowns again. They're just, just awesome. Clowns are the reason I got into the hobby. I know I said that before, but... I love those guys. All right, <clears throat> have the fox face right there. Um, very laid back. When he gets disturbed or nervous, he turns light brown, yellow, almost white. And when he gets in defense mode, his spikes go up. They're beautiful, but they're also venomous. But he doesn't attack anybody. Of course, we got the naso tang, nice and fat. When I got this guy, he was an impulse buy, and um, <clears throat> I didn't, I didn't want to get another fish, and I didn't want a naso tang because I have enough fish in my tank. But I walked into this little hole in the wall reef store that just had fish, and I saw this guy. He's just gorgeous. Um, there were like eight nasos in the tank, and I got this one. They were all beautiful, but he was the best, and he was pretty thin. But after I got him, he beefed up pretty good. Um, tangs are herbivores, look how wide and beefy this dude is. Herbivores meaning they're veggie eaters and I feed them um, bok choy and collard greens from the grocery store. Just what you'd put in your salad. I just don't rinse it off. We just, I put two leaves in there a day. It looks kind of silverish, that's because the blue light is hitting it, but it's green. Uh, there's another... There's a snowflake clownfish. Um, large frog spawn coral here is doing good. It's extending rather well. Um, coming off the rock really well. Um, star polyps growing on the rock, spreading well. Um, star polyps were my first and favorite coral. And uh, there's a foulery tang. Look at the beautiful markings on him. Gorgeous fish, about 13 inches long. Everyone gets along really well, as you can tell. Look at this guy, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. He's my first big fish. I went into a store looking for a coal tang um, to help clean the algae off the glass and whatnot, and the guy's trying, trying to talk me to like, get a big fish, get a display fish. I don't want that. I don't want to spend the money on them. Well, I did. I had a 75-gallon aquarium, and um, this guy outgrew that tank. They like to swim, as most fish do, especially tangs back and forth all day. And that's why I got my 125-gallon, mainly because of this dude. Um, it's six feet long. See? So they can swim back and forth all day. Yes, I know he needs a bigger tank. It's not bad. I mean, look. Plenty of room for him to swim and do laps. That's one reason why I don't have a lot of rock. 
I have space in the back for them to swim as he's doing now. And he comes around and he swims in the front. So if I had rocks up against the glass in the back, I don't like that for two reasons. For one, a lot of garbage and uneaten food and the fish waste will get caught in the rocks. For number two, there's less water flow getting through the rocks. For number three, there's less swimming space for these guys. So I designed it so they can do laps, right? Um, who else is in here? Sailfin tang. I bought the sailfin tang the same day as I did the impulse buy on the naso tang right here. Sailfin tang. I always wanted one, um, and I I didn't want to add more fish to my tank, but I got the naso tang, and I'm like, do I want the naso or the sailfin? And I told the guy, screw it, I'll just take both. So I added too many fish into a already too many fish fish tank. But that's why you got to keep the tank extra clean and um, vacuum the sand and blow off the rock with a turkey baster to get all the garbage off of it so it gets filtered out. Um, Duncan coral, it's doing really well. The story on the Duncan coral, if you guys forgot, <clears throat> I actually got this Duncan coral online. Really bad experience three times with this place. It's a leading place. Not because they're good, but because they're a big name. I think you know who I'm talking about. It starts with an L. And the first time they sent me a twig in the mail, um, just like a tree branch twig, there was no coral in the bag. Second time they did the same thing. Third time they thought I was pulling a fast one and I was lying to them. But they sent me another coral that was pretty much dead and there was no flesh in it whatsoever. It was just like, you know, another twig with that looked like it might want to be a coral. Well, I left it in here for three months. It did absolutely nothing. No signs of life. It was like a tree branch. And my wife is like, just get rid of it. Well, I refuse to get rid of it because I'm stubborn, even though it was beyond dead. Well, four months later, there was a sign of life, and it finally peeked its head out. And then once I put it in the 120, uh, not the 125, once I put it up higher on the rock, I thought that'll do something. It really didn't. Um, another six months later, it looked like this, but with only one small head. Now it's got like eight or ten heads on it. This thing's massive. It's huge. It took like nine months to come to life. So I have never ordered from that place again, and I won't. I like to look at things before I buy them. Um, unless it's Coral Lust. If you're looking for corals, I highly recommend Coral Lust. He's awesome. Danny's a very cool guy. Speaking of Coral Lust, here's my hammer coral I got from Coral Lust. It is closed up. It usually flows like this frog spawn here, but it's closed up. And I think it's because my nitrates are high because I stopped sugar dosing for uh, two weeks. Because I was doing an experiment uh, with some other form of carbon dosing that did not work. So I'm back to sugar dosing. Uh, the dude's going to town on the rock. That is Kermit. I named him Kermit. All the other fish do not have names, but he just reminds me of Kermit the Frog, so... Kermit the Frog! So I named him Kermit. Um, who else is in here? I think that's really about it. Oh yeah, so here's the new guy. Um, he was in quarantine for a while. This is a coal tang. I love coal tangs. They eat... All tangs eat algae and help keep your tank algae free. Um, I had a coal tang, a, a yellow eye tang that was as big as my uh, yellow tang right here. Except he was deep navy blue with a yellow circle around each eye. It was gorgeous. Um, I don't know what happened. He unfortunately passed away um, like a month ago. So I went right out and I got another coal tang. I wanted a blue eye yellow coal tang. I'm sorry, I wanted a coal tang yellow eye but I couldn't find one so I got the blue eye which means he's solid blue and there he is again so he's only been in there for a couple weeks everybody is getting along with him he's making his way through the tank everyone's getting along really well he's a little guy he'll grow to be maybe one and a half times that size close to twice that size Again, I don't know what happened to the coal tang. There was no mismarkings on him. Um, 
no parasites, no attacks. He just, he died clean, basically. Um, maybe it was just his time. Um, everyone else has been healthy. No one's had any signs of parasites or weirdness. Um, so it, it was just probably his time. Um, unfortunately, look how beautiful these guys are. Man, just great. Um, there's a mandarin back here. Here he is. There's the guy. Can't really see him. He's doing really well. Plenty of food for this dude to eat. Copods and whatnot, and they live all in the rock. You can't see it, but inside this rock, there are like thousands and thousands of those guys breeding, and that's what he eats. For the mandarins, you want to have them in a well-established tank. They're absolutely gorgeous fish, but you can't have them in a tank that's roughly under a year old because um, the tank isn't established and there's not many amphipods for him to eat. Amphipods are those clear see-through tiny little bugs that are about as big as a half a millimeter or two millimeters in length. Um, so... Here's another coral from Coral Lost. I'll let Danny chime in and tell us what it is. If he watches this, it's it's beautiful. I'm just not sure what that is. Here's one that I really like from Danny at Coral Lost as well. I don't know what that is. We'll let him chime in. It's gorgeous. It doesn't flow, but I like the color on it. I don't know if it's going to spread or what. Um, there's white on the rocks. It's actually fish waste. I'm going to have to take a turkey baster and blow it off the rock so it gets caught up in the water column and out the filter. I'm not doing much of anything with um, the lighting. I'm still using the egg crate. Um, I really like it. It's easy to take on and off. Um, it's absolutely awesome. I've got my T5 bulbs. I've got the ATI bulbs. I've got the purple the coral, coral plus for the corals and two blues. All right, I'm thinking about getting rid of the purple and putting in a third blue. I have a blue extra one to make this tank extra blue. I know in the video this tank looks kind of blue, but it's not that blue. It looks more like this right here. It's actually, here's a good representation of what the tank kind of looks like right about here right in this area right here and that looks really good I'd like it to be a little more blue so I might change out that purple bulb I'm not really sure um, when you sit on the couch and look at the tank because I don't have a canopy this kind of blinds you look at how much better the tank looks when I cover that up see that that's that's beautiful and that's what I'm talking about tank looks killer but you're blinded, so I'm thinking about getting some like limo tint and putting like four or five inches of limo tint with double tape up there so it kind of blocks that because it's so much better without the glare. You know, it's just crazy, and I don't want to get a canopy. From what I understand, Reefing with Billy Pipes did something, and I got to watch his video to help this situation. I want to remove that glare. It would make the tank look so much better. Underneath, I just have uh, my simple little eShop sump that's like 15 gallons. I got my dual 2500 plus pumps from Rio. I absolutely love Rio plus pumps. Um, I do have to add a gallon of water daily because of the egg crate. The water evaporates at an alarming rate. Um, I don't want to go with an auto top off system. I'm fine with just adding a gallon of water a day um, For my RODI unit when I feed them. I just add a gallon of water. I've got a foam block a foam uh, pad in here Works absolutely great. I get it off Amazon. I just trim it and I put it in there I've got a little piece of egg crate that I cut so this will not fall down So the water gets filtered through and it it, it polishes the water great. I mean look, it's just Look, it's just clear. It's just, it's just awesome. It's just awesome. So there's that. That's number one. Uh, number two, of course, is the protein skimmer by eShops, my S200, which I absolutely love to get the nasties out of the water. Um, and then, of course, I have my rotter tube. 
which I absolutely love. This is what I attribute the crystal clear water to mainly. It's basically this tube here that I designed. I've got both overflows coming down and meeting into a T. The water flows through down into the three inch clear um, rotter tube, clear PVC, falls out either end, but inside I've got foam in there. I'm gonna do a video soon where I put some GFO in there to see if GFO helps to lower the phosphates of the tank, which are already pretty low, but you can put, you know, GFO in there, you can put any type of media in there, nitrate absorbing rock, whatever you want, but I'm putting foam in there because I don't need biological filtration. I want to capture the large particles and the smaller particles in the rotter tube so it doesn't get all caught up in my protein skimmer. And then to finally polish the water, I don't really need this, but I've added it. Another foam piece. That's all I need. I was going to get a bigger sump, but this works just fine. I don't need the extra water um, density. I need filtration. So it gets met with this, then it gets filtered through the protein skimmer to get all the nitrates out and all the nasty stuff, minuscule stuff in the tank. And then it goes to a final polishing before it gets to the third chamber. That's really all I'm doing. Um, that's my May update. Um, I also did take out my snowflake eel. You guys did see a video on the snowflake eel. Um, he or she has been removed. I gave him or her to a friend. I uh, didn't really want to part with the eel. It was absolutely amazing. But um, they, they really wanted one and they couldn't find one anywhere. So until I get a larger tank, I'm just gonna give, I just gave the eel to them. Absolute, no, absolutely no issues with the fish. Um, the eel was fine. Eels are actually kind of blind. So they get their food by sense of smell. If anyone says that the eel attacks their fish, it's only because they saw it swim by quickly and I thought it was a piece of moving food. Um, but it, it never went after my fish. Um, I would feed the snowflake eel um, cocktail shrimp on a stick. He used to live right in that cavern and I would put the stick in here right at that level and he would just come out like a snake, grab it, shake it up and disappear and eat it. So I've got cocktail shrimp now which is what I also feed these guys on a stick. They absolutely love it. Um, I'll be doing a video on each one of these fish in depth but for now that's that's what I have. Um, as far as, oh, you, some of you guys asked about the um, air stone. It's not an air stone. I always wanted to try this just for the heck of it. Um, it oxygenates the water by having bubbles in it, which is something I don't need to do. But I can't remember. I think it's, is it called a hide? No. What is this? My, my mind is not that sharp this weekend. I got one of these foam filter... Um, bubbles, bubblers in the back. I have it in my quarantine tank. Um, works absolutely awesome. Um, let's see, it's uh, the foam is a massive breeding ground for biological filtration, which I don't really care about. I just wanted to trap some of the fish waste and uneaten food and garbage, which you can see it's doing a good job. It's only been in here for a week, um, so I'll rinse it out in. RODI water because I don't care about the biological um, being wasted. Um, it's giving a lot of bubbles in the tank which will oxygenate the water. But most importantly the Fowlery tang right there, he loves to swim through the bubbles and play in them. So that's another big reason I keep it. Here he comes. No, he decided not to. So, you know, keep, being that this foam filter block is rated for like a hundred gallon aquarium, I thought, let me just put it in the back where there's not much flow and see how much stuff it actually filters out of the water. So, who knows? I mean, my water was pretty crystal clear before I put this in. I'm just going to keep it in. Mainly because they, uh, they like playing in it and it oxygenates the water, which will help the pH level. Again, not that I needed it, but if you're having issues with pH, you can put an air stone in there or just, you know, open the door open the windows and let the air hit it. Plus, if you do want to have glassless lids or netting on the top, it allows for the air to 
enter the tank much better and nitrogen gas will escape. Um, I have one high door power head pointed at the glass right here so it bounces down. That's really it. Um, and then I have my one MP40. That's it. I had two MP40s, one on each end, but the second one died because I was using um, a sump sock and the sump sock overflowed and it ran onto my electrical and yeah, it was partially my fault, of course, because I um, had the AC adapter in an area where water could... Actually, the other one was laying right next to, to it on here, the floor here, so the water ran through that's what happened. The sump sock overflowed. It overflowed in the sump and the sump flowed over and it got here. So that's another reason I don't like sump socks. Um, the router tube has never overflowed on me. I've had excellent, excellent luck. Um, I've had really great feedback from those of you guys who've ordered the tube saying that you love it and it pulls a lot of stuff out of the water. By the way, I just take out the end and I pull the foam out and I replace it every four days. And uh, that's it. Who's this? Oh, you want to come up on the couch? Jump! Jack says hi. Jump! Come on, boy. Jump! Let's go, boy. Come on, boy. Jump. All right. So that's it. Thanks for watching. Uh, so subscribe if you haven't already. Give the video a like. And uh, see you guys next time. We'll be doing probably a monthly update. Just to show you guys the tank and talk about what's going on and how the guys are doing and that's about it talk to you guys later have a great weekend and happy reefing hey what are you doing good looking boy